Thank you for listening to Lone Star Community Radio. This program was broadcasted and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is supported by listeners like you. Donate and sponsor today. For more information on getting involved with Lone Star Community Radio, contact us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or visit us online at www.irlonestar.com. All right, we're on Mornings with Lone Star here on Lone Star Community Radio. It's 9, 10 in the morning, running a little late because I was talking to my special guest. We're having a good time right now. And uh, if you are listening on our stream or FM 104.5, 106.1, we're broadcasting live on Facebook and, of course, YouTube for Mornings of Lone Star, Lone Star Community Radio. In the studio, we have a game changer. That's right. We have a game changer. I I love it. We have Jeff Newkirk in the studio. He is a podcast host and uh, I guess this business consultant, consultant. executive coach, podcaster. Yeah. See, us podcasters. All the above. Yep. Us podcasters have yeah. like an underground network. That's how I ran into you. Mm-hmm. It's through our, our mafia. <laughs> and he's a capo. I'm not a capo yet. It's it's gonna get there. But uh but I'm happy to have you in here. It's I will great to be here. Thanks. I will let the listeners know of the website to your understandable solutions and also game changers is in the description. So if people wanna okay. check it out. And we can just say, hey, the website's right there in the description on YouTube, Facebook, all cool, that kind of stuff. Cool. Yeah, all the um, podcast episodes are, there's a link from the Understandable Solutions to Game Changers, and then all the episodes are on Game Changers, so, yeah. You know, it's funny, I was looking at your website for Game Changers, and I realized you have one of those faces that looks so drastically different with a beard <laughs> that I, I was like, he, he needs to change that picture, because that does not look like him at all. So, that that I heard that a couple weeks ago i was i was uh, giving a presentation and somebody said hey uh this picture on your p- podcast it's not even you yeah i'm like yeah that is me yeah. well you gotta get a new picture i'm like well w- what's the deal i mean they gain that much weight what's the story like well eh, that and the facial hair <laughs> yeah no you really do you really do have one of those faces that you're like wait a second the, either that picture on the website is so old that you look so young. It's not that old. <laughs> well, I, I don't. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying that's because you know you, some people have hair like that. Yeah. Where like well, mine's all gray. That doesn't help. Well, like I know, like if I get a haircut, people think I'm 20. Like if I get like a haircut, like a the Kennedy, that's usually what I usually <laughs> yeah. get. You know, I've been getting the Kennedy since Instead I was they four think years you're old. Five. And then like they're like, okay, you look so much younger. But so if I if I have the longer hair, it's weird. You think longer hair would make yeah. you look younger? Yeah. But if I have the longer hair, they're like, okay, so this guy's just a hobo. So <laughs> it's not a kid; it's a hobo. So yeah. Yeah, let me tell you, talk about business consulting. Uh, I think that's the first thing my dad always tells me every time I see him. What's Cause that? Because he he's he's a business consultant kind of guy. Okay, yeah. He's like, you just need to get a haircut. You'll be fine. <laughs> Every time I see him, Dad, with, it's not the hair, man. Without not the hair. without fail, you need to shave, cut the hair. You'll be, everyone will talk to you after that. Oh, but if my dad were still alive, he'd be after me with my facial hair. Yeah, he'd be like that's you can't have that, can't have that. It's so inappropriate. And that's what what I love about that kind of mentality because that is I, I wouldn't call it the old school mentality, but uh, what I love about it is you look at the most famous rich people today because there's still rich people out there that are not famous and mm-hmm. they probably look like yeah. real real big squares right but like the right. rich famous people my favorite is the guy who used to own twitter oh my gosh i is it jack something jack I dorsey i think yes yeah right but he right, had right. this like like a beard that i wouldn't grow oh it was it was crazy you know what i'm talking about yes. like because some people can grow like, a beard man, that, that some people can grow it <laughs> but it's like what some people can grow a beard yeah, you're right, right. And some people like me, like if I grow this out any further, it'll look like all patchy. Oh. And so I'm yeah, like, I'm never going to get to that length ever. No. Like I'm never going to allow it. But see, he allowed it. Yeah. And so when you see him, I'm like, I see what my dad's saying. They say, like, that's kind of crazy. But and again, <laughs> this guy's a billionaire. Just trim it up, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, that's what I'm saying. He looks, he looks. But yeah, he could do whatever, right? He's, he's multi-billion. Isn't that funny, though? Like just because you have money, people are like, yeah, you can do whatever. Money, yeah, money talks. I guess kind of like Jerry Seinfeld dating that seventeen-year-old. What? You don't remember that story back no. in the Seinfeld days? Well, I watch Seinfeld all the time, but yeah, there, that, that was like a uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld dated like a high schooler. Like I think wow. she was either graduating high school or she just graduated high school, like within the year. 
Okay. Wow. No, I don't remember that. That's I gotta look it up now. now I think. <laughs> but that was a great show. I oh, oh yeah. Show. No, that's what. Oh, because again, it's like if you're famous, are you allowed to do do certain stuff? <laughs> yeah. All right, let me. I'm yeah. looking it up. I'll make sure that okay. Uh, boop, 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 boop. All right. Yeah. So she was 17 years old. Yeah. And how old was he at the time? He was 38. That is not just borderline wrong. I think it's wrong. great. I think you should go for it. Change, you know, <laughs> change, change the world. You know, with your new idea, it's wow. Cherry. Yeah. Well, that's. I don't know, man. That's kind of past pushing the envelope. Is it? Well, let's get into those deep dive into. Let's deep dive into this. Well, that's 21 well, years. Well, I always. You know, because rec- my daughter came home with a oh no, I get no, I get no. It's, that's different because you're the dad. See what it's well, funny. First of all, I don't like any boyfriend. Well, it's just what I'm saying. I don't, I don't care the, their age. I know that's what I'm saying. Like you're the dad, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Uh, what what I love is recently I'm single, and someone mentions like, "Oh, you want to go to the high school and pick up some like what was that line from a uh, uh, Matthew McConaughey's, you know." The girls stay the same age as I get older or whatever. That's the <laughs> great thing remember, about high school. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Uh, yeah. And I was laughing. I go. Well, he's always had a good line. Yeah, I, was, I think. Yeah, I think it's a great thing about high school girls is they keep staying the same age, but as I get older or something like that, <laughs> something, something like that on lines. But uh, you made that joke, and I was laughing because I go, you know, what's weird is at one point in society that was acceptable, Ooh. and I was like, that was a long time ago. Yeah. But. I know. Uh, but it, I was thinking to myself, I was like, "What is high school even like today?" Oh my goodness! Because I don't, I don't have any connection to children, so I have no idea. Because last oh. thing I heard about school was they changed the way they teach math. So yes. and they don't teach yes. cursive, so it's like it'd be a whole new language I'm well, learning that too. But yeah, so my kids are older; they're out of high school. They're I've got one out of college, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's changed since since they've been in high school. So it, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I think it's kind of crazy right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have kids in high school or grade school. Well, I always felt that we, we should do that whole conscription thing. The you know what? You know, like when you have kids, just send them to the Army. <laughs> and then, like, that, that, that's, their, that's their education. And when they hit 18, okay. they're out of the Army. And then they're good to go. And then they can go to, like, a special okay. ed school. And you don't have any kids, right? Not yet. I want to, you know. Okay. All right. Well, when you do, you like, I'm wanna... kidding. Because <laughs> so many people don't know what to do. You know, it's like, oh, we'll give you something to do. <laughs> it's a whole new ball game when you become a dad. I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. And I mean, it's totally. something, especially growing up today. I can't imagine what what new challenges they would face, and then how me as a dad will manipulate them into believing something oh. that. It's, I mean, because it's always like, oh, the economy, oh, the job market, oh, the banking, oh, the ozone layer, or like, it's always something. Always, always. and it's it's kind of weird to me. But as a dad, you're always so protective, and you know, I have 21 year old twin girls, or identical twins, and uh, one of them wanted to go over to, I don't know, grocery stores like eight o'clock at night. I'm like, eh, you know, I don't think that's a good idea. She's yeah. like, Dad, I, I mean, I'm packing. I'm. <laughs> well, I had one of the twins would likes to kind of fly under the radar, but the other one, she'll she'll mix it up. She'll get yeah. right, she'll get right up, she's got right pe- up in your face. She's got pepper spray oh, and the nightstick. Yeah. She's and, all over it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you want to mess with me? Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. But brass father, knuckles, like, brass knuckles would be great. I would love to see might that. Might have them. I don't know. But as a father, you want to protect them, right? You don't want to. You want to keep them in that bubble. And yes, they have to go out and they have to go to the grocery store once in a while. But it's like there's a lot of crazy people out there, right? I mean, you, you want to protect you know what, them. Can I tell you something? Cra- crazy. I got bamboozled. Like I got. Oh. I don't know how to call it. So I uh, I closed the bowling alley, okay, a couple nights a week, okay, at 300 bowl, and I'm sitting there at the ca- front, and this guy comes in, and he's wearing one of those COVID masks, that, or like you know those, the well people wear masks during COVID, right, right, but this was like a whole scarf kind of thing, yeah, it was surrounded his whole head, yeah, it's almost like what a construction worker would wear, right, yeah, and he comes oh, in, oh, you can only see his eyes, yes, yeah, so he comes gotcha. in and he goes, 
hey, I mean, I'm meeting my sister here. And it's her birthday. And, you know, do you have any lanes available? And I'm like, well, yeah, we close at this time. He's like, well, can I get changed for 100? And I just go. Out of nowhere. Yeah. Any lanes open, change for 100. Change for 100. And he's like, can I just get some 20s? And I was like, sure. And I, I'm, you know, doing it. Give him the 20s. Like, well, actually, hold on. Let me, let me have that 100 back. Here's the 20s. Can I get, like, four fives? You know, X amount of ones. And then, 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 then like, All right, at what point did you say to yourself something's up? So yeah, right. Well, I thought something's up with a hundred dollars, but next yeah. thing I know, and this is how good he was, somehow through all, we exchanged hands like seven times. Because and you're trading the hundred dollars back and forth, back or? and forth, and he's trying to figure it out. And then he goes, "Hey, I'm gonna go have a cigarette," and he leaves. And I sit there and I go, "Something just happened." <laughs> and I look down, and the hundred dollars is gone. And somehow, and the twenties, and the twenties. So you got a hundred dollars off me, and I was like, I and I literally, it was so funny. Is so what, wait, sir, you don't want a bowl after all? And I would immediately. <laughs> and uh, somebody who's watching, uh, one of the one of my friends who uh, manages like managed snack bar, manages a lot of other areas. Yeah. She goes, something just happened, didn't it? And I go, yeah, pretty sure that guy just took a hundred dollars, like just took it, like not accidentally, like took it. Yeah. And so I ran outside. He's gone. He and oh, he we, did run outside. Oh yeah, I, 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 I immediately realized it within like because it was a funny feeling. Like I got fleeced, and I was like, something happened. You, you did. No, I, and, <laughs> and then what I love is I went on the. Uh, we, we we talked to the guy who runs the camera. I was like, we need to watch me. I go, y'all want to? <laughs> he was laughing. He's like, watch Richard get fleeced, <laughs> and then you see it. You see my confused. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> and then like I just run outside, and then they had blackout plates and everything. They were professionals. So what? Yeah. Wow. And I was like, man, he probably could have got a lot more than a hundred dollars from me because I didn't even know what was going on. Yeah. And he was a smooth talker. He was doing it, and even had he even had the extra hundred in his hand to make it look like he had another hundred. No kidding. So he was just going to the next restaurant, bar, bowling yeah. alley. Apparently, that's the thing. Wow. Hmm. So watch out out there. Yeah. If somebody asks you for change for 100, say no. Yeah. Well, now, now I'm going to be like, I'll give you change, but I'll go do it in the back. I only, I only do Venmo. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you think about that? Is like when uh, businesses only accept credit cards. Well, from a business perspective, if you only accept credit cards, you got the somewhere between 2 and 3% fee that you're paying. Yeah, but I think that's but just like business as usual today is accepted. It, yeah, well, that and it's it's I guess I I hardly even carry cash anymore. Yeah. You know? It's that's usually what all I use. You know, and I think that really happened with COVID. You know, nobody was taking cash. And if you think about it, it's probably not that bad. You ever looked at how dirty money is? Pretty I nasty. don't really. I'm I'm a dirty guy, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> so it's like to me, I'm like cool. I never really thought of it until somebody pointed out, like you know, how many hands touch that dollar bill? Like, how well, uh, I many hands touch that doorknob? Uh, yeah, and it's like so get over it, dude. Yeah. Get over it. And now it, what I love is people. I know, talk, it sounds like I'm a germaphobe. Well, no, that it's like it, what's even worse is you're touching your car, uh, and your car's driving through how much stuff and dirt and grime when you fill up your tank with gas. No, I'm just talking about the drive. Yeah. Like, the, oh. you driving over here. Right, right. How much stuff has touched your car? Yeah, true. Like, But the inside of my car is perfectly Yeah, clean. but you got to open it. <laughs> so, it's right. like, it's not going to. Right. That's what I love right. about people who are like, oh, I'm really germaphobe. Like, I, w- I like the doors that have the thing on the bottom so I can open it with my foot. I'm like, yeah, but you're still going to no, touch. No, that doesn't work. Well, but you know what I'm talking about? People are yeah, like that, though. Yeah, I know. But I, and I'm like, I you know, that, it's like, come on. Man. Like, I get that the ba- bathroom is a very dirty place compared to, like, the hallway. Yeah. But at, at the end of the day, you're still touching a lot of things. And well, But when, all right, last night we were out for dinner. Guy was, went into the restroom, and he just walked out. He didn't wash his hands. And we are like, in a restaurant. And I was like, dude, it's kind of gross, right? You got to wash your hands, man. Yeah. I don't care if you got the foot pedal on the door or not. Ugh. Yeah. So. Mm. Well, I mean, it depends if you're a guy. Because I've seen guys, they're, they have, they're magicians. <laughs> you know, you don't have to touch anything. You just go. I still think. So it's I think it's kind of no, it's kind of weird. Wash your hands. I wonder what the print. I, I mean, no matter what you touch, it's gonna be dirty. I, I yeah, that's true. Germs everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, gotta get over it. So that's why. It's true. Yeah. True. Just get rid of your hands. Yeah. So you don't have the little. 
antiseptic or whatever on you know on on, your, on, on my belt. belt. Yeah. yeah, no, I've I've I wash my hands every every day before I eat. At least once a day. Well, I try to wash it before I eat, and then before I brush Good my call. teeth, and before yeah. I use the re- after I use the restroom. Yeah. Perfect. And sometimes before I use the restroom. That's also good. So. Yeah. But it's kind of like the rule of thumb. Like when, it, when I like if I rule. use my teeth, brush your teeth. Good rule. And brush your teeth at least twice a day. Well, after I eat. Okay. It's, it's, I'm not my aunt's a dentist. <laughs> oh, okay. So that was always so. like a, it's amazing. So you have to floss too. Uh, you do more than that. It's weird. Really? It's it, She's obsessed. Well, what's more than flossing? Like, uh, go get your checkup every six months, and okay. then you know all that kind of stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's good. That means you have healthy teeth. You'll live forever. Well, that's why I dip because I have to balance it out. Wait a minute. So, what? I, yeah, you got to balance out the good and the bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, man. Um, all right. But uh, you know, you're talking about your your twin daughters, and you yeah. know, they go to the grocery store, and now it's yeah. eight eight eight, 8 p.m. And, eight p.m. Yeah, it's getting dark. Yeah, and it's and you didn't like that as a dad. No, no. Now, I said, okay, go ahead, just be careful. But yeah, no, I didn't like it. It, it, it was, there's a balance between giving them freedom, you know, and and well, they're 21. I know, I know exactly. What's well, weird? Cause and that, that's like she said to me, you know, as Emma, she's like, "Dad, come on, I'm and they're gonna be 22 next month, so mm-hmm. I mean, old enough, right? You know, Dad's well, I don't know, 20. Protective. I would say like I, I still haven't grown up. Well, so. I think in some ways that's good. I'd like to think I haven't grown up either. Like when you look at me, I'm way over the hill. I'm on the other side of the hill, Brooke. Maybe, maybe we don't really know, <laughs> right? It changes like every year. Well. You're only as old as you feel, but I'll always be protective of my of my kids, you know, and just part of being a dad. Well, I yeah, I mean, I can't say I have kids. Well, when you do, so you will. You'll be protective. Yeah, yeah. Always, what I love is I have family of five. Uh, I have five brothers and sisters, and we always gave my parents Big family. Hard, yeah, I always give my parents. We always give our parents a hard time. Is like, which one do you love more? You know, because there's like it, yeah. it's one thing to have two, like choose between two. Yeah. But when you have to choose between six, it's That's like a lot. And it's like you're gonna have someone's on the bottom of the totem pole. Right. Well, there's somebody always gonna be acting out. You got six. Uh, yeah. Did, so was there always somebody that was the perfectly behaved one, and there was always a troublemaker? It was me. You were the perfectly behaved yeah. one. No way. Well, I was the last one. You're the youngest. Yeah, I'm the of youngest six? of six, oh, so yeah. I was always the baby. Always we were spoiled. Oh yeah, and not not At least like you recognize. Well, it. not like financially. It was more of like I could get away with it, whatever I wanted. Yeah. Not saying I did whatever I wanted, but I also learned so much from my older brother and sisters, like not to do certain stuff. Yeah, and what you could get away with, and then uh, so by the time you came along, it was perfected. Yeah, you pretty know, you much knew exactly what to do and what not to do. Yeah. Wow. Busy household, six kids. Yeah. Is there a big fun. age to difference? Yeah, I think my oldest brother, I want to say he's 52, 53. You don't know? No. Okay. I don't really, I'm really bad with dates. <laughs> uh, like, I get my, my birthday, I get my birthday right most of the time. Because most of the time? Well, because, like, my brother's June 1st. Okay. I'm June 5th. My dad's June 26th. My, uh, cousins like June twelfth, and then there's like a an aunt or something that's on June second, and June so is a big month. So it's just all well. I have yeah, I have like forty something cousins, and we have a we're not Mormon, which is I, weird. One of my cousins had nine kids. No judgment here. One of my cousins had nine kids. That's a lot of kids. That's a lot of kids. Like when they show up to the family gatherings, it's oh. like it's like they're In the pol- it, no, it's like the presidential escort. Because there's like so many of the cars, it's like the black vans, and it's just like, <laughs> what is happening here? But yeah, no, I know it's it's weird, and I'm the only. I think I'm the only one that doesn't have kids. Now that I think about it, I think out of your, I uh, think out of all these people, 
Well, I'm sure that will change. Well, I always told my mom, I was like, you know, you already have 16 nieces or 16 grandchildren. Like, you don't need any more. Like, it's not that, like, there's not a lot but of that's, pre- that's not how you, you're well, I'm just saying, at it, well, you know, because mom and dad are always applying pressure. I'm like, you're good. Like, you don't need to put pressure on me. You're, you're good. You're everything in time, right? Well, yeah. I go, oh, it's an odds game. So it's like, you got 16, there's going to be a good one in there. You know, we don't. I mean, we can't increase the odds. I mean, well, it's like the six, right? I mean, there's a one that was perfectly behaved and one that was not. Yeah. So, did you have a brother or sister that was kind of the troublemaker? Oh yeah. No, I don't think anyone went to prison. Well, I didn't even mean to that extent. Uh, I don't think. I think there's. I think one of us went to jail for something. But. So one. Of you went to jail for something, but you don't know what. I don't know. I mean, well, when I say jail, I mean like one day. It's still jail. It's still jail. That counts. Maybe. I don't know. I never really asked, but I can see that being like, because some family, you know, some family people like don't talk about like certain things that happen in the family. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I knew a person, I kid you not, this is like a true story. Uncle Joey went uh, to jail. When I mean that, there was like, I went to a family, like a family thing with a friend of a friend. So it was like, I didn't really know the family. Mm-hmm. Well, then it was explained to me that one of the aunts messed around with one of her daughter's friends in high, like in high school. What? So she went to jail. Yeah. Wow. And they were explaining this to me because I was like, what's going on? Like, something's going on here. And she's like, oh, she just got out like a year ago. So the family's still kind of like accommodating. So I was like, wow. It was like really wild to me. I was like, I can't believe y'all just openly told me that, but I like it. Because, you know, some people do not talk about certain things. Oh, for, well, that would be something they probably not talk about. Yeah. And I, and that, because yeah, I could sense it, and I was like, this feels really that's weird. That's different than, like, you know, embezzling or mail fraud. Oh, yeah. Or... But isn't that fantastic in a way that, like, things like that do exist? This isn't just, like, a CBS drama show <laughs> that they just write this ridiculous stuff, and it's like, no. like It's real. This is this stuff really happens. It really happens. So it's, and it's, and it makes it more, hum, like, humanized to me. Because after I'd learned that, yeah. I knew how to treat the room. And I was like, now I understand what's happening, and everyone's going through something. That, that's true. And I mean, and if you think about it, everybody is. Yeah. Everybody's got something. You know? And I think that's what pisses me off a lot of time when I'm talking to people and the emotion roller coaster that happens. Yeah. You're like, what just happened? Where where, where, where are you coming from? Right. Oh, my, your dad died? Oh, I didn't know that. Because I've been there. I, <laughs> one time when I was uh, younger, we are trying to meet meet girls, you know, that kind of th- okay, stuff. Yeah. And these girls and one of these guys were talking in the corner at a party. And I was like, I go over there and start talking to them. I'm like, yeah, cool. And then they were all talking about how they all had this thing in common. And it was they had a dead girlfriend or boyfriend that died. They had what? This is what they were talking about. Oh my goodness! Their their girlfriend or boyfriend had like they previously had one that right. passed away. Right. And we're talking, and I just made an offhand joke, and I was like, "Well, I guess I gotta go. I don't have a dead girlfriend or boyfriend to oh, talk boy. about." Oh boy! Oh <laughs> boy! And I was just like, yeah, I didn't even think about it. And then the next thing I know, the dude wanted to fight me. The girls were crying, and I was like, "Y'all are the ones that came to a party to talk about your deceased girl." And we're like twenty. 21. Didn't that strike you though as sort of unusual that you there were that there were that many deceased? Twins? That's what I'm talking about. That was kinda, like that's because I creepy. when I went over there, I was like, "What are y'all talking about?" And they're like, "Oh, I'm talking about Susie. You know, Susie was my girlfriend, and when I was 16, and you know, I was like, it was tragic stuff. Don't get me wrong, but oh, I'm like, very sad. But I'm like, wait, is this like like a group meeting or something? A, <laughs> ooh, wow. I don't know, yeah. but yeah, it was. Uh, it's always fun to go into a conversation, not know where it's going, and then. Uh, <laughs> so did the uh, did you end up fighting the guy? Well, no. Uh, luckily for me, all my friends are football players, and they oh, just good. threw him out. Good. And then uh, the girls cried, and they we tried. Did to you say you were sorry? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, I was like, okay. hey, I was you know I wasn't trying to be offensive. Okay. Like, sorry that happened, but <laughs> like, good. I just I was sort of afraid that you just sort of laughed and then walked away, but no, you were apologetic and good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. And I, and to me, it's an offhanded comment. I probably, you know, I like saying those kind of jokes because it's like there's a time and place for both of us. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And it was, uh, to me, I still laugh about it because I was like, can you imagine walking up and that's what people are talking about at a, like a party? And it's like, this is weird. This is going to get weird. And it, that would be very uncomfortable and awkward. Yeah. For sure. And that's why I was like, well, I'm going to leave. 
because yeah. I don't have anyone that's dead. <laughs> So yay me. <laughs> yeah. So are you are you married? Uh thirty four years. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. And you only have two kids? Three. Three? Yeah. So we have a son, he's gonna be twenty four next month. So his birthday kinda interesting. His birthday is July eighth. Okay. And then his identical twin sisters uh will turn twenty two on July seventh. So we have three birthdays in a matter of two days. Now as a as a parent, do y'all just combine them? No. Cause no, I mean, it depends. We don't. We never wanted to feel like one of the kids were slighted, you know. Like especially with the twins. Yeah, right. I mean, which one would you like more? Oh man, it depends on how they're behaving. I would. I would do it on a game of competition, like who's the better shooter. But they they are extremely competitive with each other. I mean, they will to, to this day. My best friends are twins, and it's hilarious oh they're, they're i mean they're just like start doing stuff to each other that i, I don't I mean i don't even get and th- these guys were boys too what i love is they would fight so much it took me a little bit to get used to like just letting them fight you just gotta let it go yeah and i'm like because we'll be in the car and i'll be driving they just start hitting each other and i'm like I'm just i'm just gonna focus on driving yeah <laughs> like, just, let them, just let them hit each other and you know when the when the girls were younger, I'd be like, "No, you guys got to get along, got to get along." Yeah. Now it's just you know, all right, you want to beat each other up, go for it. Yeah. I mean, and they're going to be twenty two. I think they're going to be like that when they're forty. You know, they're just going to do stuff to each other to antagonize them, and then they're going to duke it out. That's and then hilarious. somewhere along the way, their brother gets involved, and so total chaos. All right, yeah, okay. But it's good. They're great kids. We're we're very lucky. Yeah. So our son is in uh, Cincinnati, and the girls, uh, well, one's home for the summer, and one's stayed up in Fort Worth. They go to TCU. Oh, cool, TCU. Yeah. yeah. You know, TCU is the only school or Division I uh, NCAA school that had a football team go to the national championship, and basketball get, and team. get rocked. Yes, they did, get but rocked. still they got there. Still get they got, rocked. Look at the big picture, man. They still got there, okay? Oh, no. Yes, it was, the game was over like oh. in the first two minutes. So I, I, I went to ACU, and I was in Abilene, and my uh, brother went to A&M. My other brother went to TCU, so I know, I'm know i familiar with TCU. My sister went to TCU, too. Okay. But uh, A&M's playing ACU this year. I, oh, my God. And I was like. That's got to be one of the first games. Or, no, it's like November 18th. Late in the season, yeah, and uh, wow. I texted my brother. I was like, "You ready for A and M to lose?" <laughs> <laughs> wow, would that and, be something? Oh uh, no! Well, ACU beat Texas in basketball a happen. couple of years ago. It so I, I was like, I know my my uh, a lot of my family members went to te- Texas. I was talking so much trash when that happened. When really? AC, when ACU oh. beat Texas, I was like, "Can yeah. you believe that? That little call, that little college town, AC Abilene?" <laughs> but. Uh, yeah. One thing I was surprised about Abilene is they produce football players. The entire state of Texas produces football players. True. I, mean, I was just is... well. No, it weirded me out when I first went to school. There was when the uh, there's two high schools there. Okay. When they would play each other, that was a bigger event than any college football I'll game. Bet. Yeah. And I was like, you go to the Starbucks, you go to like any local place, they either got gold or black. Right. And I was right. just like, Friday this Night is, Lights. Yeah, and I was like, this is really weird. And, and the stadium probably... Oh, it was nuts. 10,000 people. That was nuts. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. It's amazing. I mean, the stadiums, the high school stadiums in Texas, unbelievable. Yeah. They all seat 10, 15,000, millions of dollars. It's pretty awesome, really. Yeah, it's kind of creepy a little bit. Because, like, some of the towns that have them are so small. But they have these huge stadiums. They have these huge stadiums. Yeah. So you're like, what do they do there? Besides football. Yeah. Uh, Friday Night Lights. Yeah, true. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. What, let's actually talk about what you, with the podcast you have. Because okay. people are like, Game changers. people are yeah. like, what the hell? Where are they, where are they going with this? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jeff has Game Changers podcast. I put a link to it. And it is, you interview, it's about 30, 45 minute podcasts. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Around that area. And you interview, I would say leaders or Literal game changers. Absolutely. So the it, so like Jerry Seinfeld dating a seventeen year old. Would that be? Would you interview him about that? 
He's I, changing the game. He's making I, he's making a stigma a norm. Man, you're. I, don't, I really don't know what to say about that. But uh, <laughs> quick answer is, I would love to talk to Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> Probably wouldn't ask him about his girlfriend uh, at the time was seventeen, but I would ask. I'm like, you trying yeah. to? Get, what were you really trying to get away with it? Like, what were you thinking? Like, what was it? What was going? How did through? that even happen? Like, how does that even happen? Uh, I mean, they they met in a public park. That's even okay, creepier. That's even that's even, yeah, that's even that, weird. That's just not good. That's well, that's not according good. to Wikipedia, so you don't really know if that's I'm true. Still, man, I, I'm. I'm <laughs> Well, uh, Game Changer. So (laughs) the objective of the podcast is simple. Uh, Inspire, educate, and I want people to go out and make a difference. When you you say those things, you mean like in a general sense? Yeah, I don't don't want, you know, when I started my podcast, it was more focused on business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you only have so many people that want to listen to business topics, right? And but I so I wanted to reach more people. And I wanted to create that uh, feeling of, you know, hey, we need to do something good in this world. Because there's not enough of that, I don't think. I think there's too much of it. Too much good in the world? Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, tell, tell me more. Well, we live in the United States. So it's a good place. It's an awesome place. So we're good. We're settled. C- can't be complacent. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's such a great time to be lazy. Like, you can't be lazy. But it's such a great time to be. No. Like, you can get away with no. so much. No. You're testing me over here. <laughs> you can't be lazy. You can't be complacent. It's all about making a difference, man. That's one thing I love about older, like as you get older, is the motivations people convince themselves of to like yeah. work out, eat healthy, all this kind of stuff. And it's like at one point, you just got to say, you're going to die. <laughs> and then, because like, because everyone always puts up these walls where it's like, oh, I got to work out. I got to like, so are you doing this because there's something over the wall? Meaning like you, you're doing this to enjoy something in the future? Because that's what everyone always talks about when they yeah. talk about saving money and stuff. For the future. For the future. And I'm thinking like, and, and I talk to my dad about this all the time because he's always, he's a businessman, very successful. Yeah. Whole art, I come from like three generations of entrepreneurs. So there you go. And, but I'm Sa- thinking to myself, I go. He knows about saving. He knows about that stuff. But, but see, I ask him, I go. So you're saving for the future, but are you saving for a future you want to live? Yes. Because it's one thing to be like, oh, I'm a billionaire or a millionaire and I can just spend money. Or is it more of like, oh, I just want to be able to pay off everything and then not worry about that kind of stuff. Because when, no, th- no, when I think no. of saving for the future, I'm thinking I want a butler. That's <laughs> what I'm thinking of. Like That's what I'm, my goal is. Like I want a butler. I want someone to open the car for me, and I don't have to drive anywhere. That'd be so cool. So you want a driver too? Yeah, like I want an Alfred. Like I, that would be the ultimate goal. Like that's the dream right there. <laughs> I want an Alfred, and like what's, so what's my schedule today, Alfred? Exactly. And I'm like, so that to me makes sense. Like that's what I'm say. That's what I'm working towards. Okay. But if it's like, but everyone always says, yeah. oh, I'm trying to, you know, I'm just saving for the future. Like, what future do you want? Like, I don't really get it, because you know, like you live in a house, right? Well, are you going to live in that? Is that the future you're going to live in that house forever? Or is, I never fully understood when people say plan for the future. Cause so the, it depends on what they want their future to look or look like, uh, right? I mean, not everybody wants a butler, but maybe the... How, why wouldn't... Okay, you're trying to tell me you wouldn't want a butler? I'm just saying not everybody does. You think, that's, you think the culture shifted? It's demeaning now to have butlers? I didn't say that. I'm just saying that not everybody wants a butler. Uh, I, I I think deep down everyone wants a butler. <laughs> Everybody wants an Alfred? Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. Maybe. I mean, you, this is what I love. So I, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I love listening to famous people yeah. casually talk about their lifestyles. They just oh. slip in stuff. Yeah. And I'm, I listen to Smartless. And I don't know if you – it's a great podcast. I love yeah. it. And there's one, one of the guys keeps talking about how their chef keeps making them all this healthy food, but he said it so casually – I go, yeah, of course you're eating healthy. Really? You have a person who literally sits, their whole job is to feed you healthy food. Like, can you imagine having a home chef? Now, I have to admit. You have a home chef? I don't. Okay, I that, thought you were going to throw that. I'll be like, oh, no. why don't you bring oh, yeah, some I food? Do, yeah. I have a couple of them. Why don't you, no. bring, why don't you bring that? <laughs> but that would be cool. I, I would have the chef before Butler. But see, I, I think. I don't have to. I, I don't have to worry about but cooking. But see, if I met you and you or... had a home chef, or you had a butler, I'd be like, this guy's a douche. <laughs> like, I would immediately think that. 
I was like, this guy doesn't even open the car door for himself. Well, I, I mean, and I that's not my thing. You know, I'd want to open my own car door, but okay. you know, some people. I want just like putting people down. Like I want people. I want to be like, yeah, you're below me. Does that make you feel better? Oh, I think or? it's just it's a status thing. Okay, all right. It's kind of like when people are like, I don't touch things. You like feed me. I'll make feed me. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Man, we got to spend some more time together. I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Well, I keep. You just know how to push my buttons. Well, I there. just love thinking about different people and the different lifestyles they have. And like, when you listen to that smart list thing, and the guy casually just talks about having this home chef guy. I'm like, does this guy not realize? Like, not everyone has that. So when they're trying to. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to do everything that you got going yeah. on because you have a chef. Well, there is a learning experience with eating healthy. And having these goals, yeah, and stuff like that, and it's just kind of like, and you have to acquire a taste for something that doesn't taste great. Well, I, right? I've had good healthy food. Oh man, my girls eat healthy, and then they try to push the, you know, the kale and the. Well, kale's not that bad, but you can make it good. You can add something to it. Like what? Well, like well, my favorite go-to is so you can. Do you like protein at all, like chicken, oh, beef, yeah. and stuff yeah. like that? Uh, yeah. So you choose Absolutely. your protein, whatever it was. I, I like doing I, chicken. I can eat chicken all day long, but I'm so, not going to eat kale all day long. So you do what I my go to is you do the chicken, chicken, and then you get your salad stuff, kale or you mm. know carrots and cucumbers, all that kind of stuff. Okay. I get a hard boiled egg. Okay. And I break out the hard boiled egg, sh- uh, shake it. Yeah. Okay. And then I get a uh, habanero or wasabi almonds. Okay. Throw that in there, shake it up, and the spice from the almonds attaches yeah. to the to the egg. It's a, it makes like a dressing, so every leaf, everything is covered in a so bite. So you don't actually good. taste the kale. Well, I mean, you're still eating it. Yeah. You can still taste yeah. it, but it has a lot of flavor to it. Will you drink a green smoothie? What's in it? Well, it's green, so. Is there like, a, is there like weed in it? <laughs> It might be weeds. Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about weed. I've had weeds. I've had the <laughs> wheat shot before. What's that? Or like it's like you mean go to those nutrition places and they yeah. give you a shot of wheat grass or something like that. Oh, uh, well, I've yeah. done that, but I was like, is that really worth it? How many do I have to drink to really like pee normally? Oh, man. or whatever it, it is, whatever it's the goal really is. Really hard for me to drink a green smoothie just because it's green. Really? Yeah, but I, I will say that. One of my sponsors is Magic Mind, which is a green little drink that gives you focus and energy. And so I do drink that. It's called Magic Mind. So it's like Adderall? Found at magicmind.com. Is it like Adderall or something? No, no. It's just like uh, like all these herbs and, you know, make you energetic and focused. It that actually is, that tastes is, pretty good. That doesn't worry you at all? No. Like, no. I hate this little bottle. Like it'll two change, ounces. It'll yeah. change your whole day. It doesn't change your whole day, but it makes you. That's like that five hour energy stuff scares me. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm not pounding five hour energy. Yeah, there's a lot of caffeine, and who knows what's in the five hour energy. Yeah, I don't. I I feel like you're burning a hole somewhere in your body. You probably are. If you have enough of that stuff, you probably are. Something's shrinking. But wait yeah. a minute. Wait a minute. So you're not gonna. You are not gonna take a five hour energy. No, I, I said it just scares me. But you did. Oh, I'll do it. I'll take the five hour energy because oh, I know what it does. Okay. Along but with the dip or what? With the, you got chew in your mouth and you're gonna do. I don't. Know. I mean, it just I mean, really, really the chew is it's like a after dinner special treat. What? That's the way I look at it. It's like you know it'd be really good right now. Good dip. A little little thing of Copenhagen. Yeah, just good. The cheek and just gum. Good, good one. <laughs> and. It's you know it's just one of those calming moments. Who was it that did the commercial? Between just put a little piece between your cheek and gum. Who was that? Uh, you're talking about like the forties. I have no. Idea I am not. About. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. But uh, hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, yeah, no. I mean, like that the health stuff. It's it. Everyone has their own struggle with it and oh, their rather. own discipline. But you know, I wish the I wish the world would uh, you know, just make food into a pill. And then we're good. But then you wouldn't have the opportunity to have like the good things like ice cream. Yeah, but everyone would lose weight. 
and everyone would be a little healthier. Pill? Well, yeah. imagine a world where they did that. They they synthesized a pill where it's like this gives you everything you need. And no more restaurants. Well, you can still go to a restaurant, you know, because you still want to have that experience of eating something delicious. Because I yeah. like chewing on meat. Right, exactly. So it's like, I mean, yeah, I'm never not going to do that. But because I've done that where I'm even full, I'm like, I'm still got a little bit of steak left. I'm going to go for it. Oh, yeah. So, but if, if everyone could take a pill, we wouldn't have all these weight problems. True. That's true. Until you go to Golden Corral. I don't really like Golden Corral. When I don't I'm either. There. No, but it's a like big, even Luby's. I know it's like blasphemy, but like Luby's never really impressed me that much. Um, you like because like my grandmother would take me there all the time, and I'm like, after like when I got to the age of like, oh, I'm yeah. paying for my own stuff. Right. I'm like, why do we go here? Because the food is decent and the people there are awesome. Let's just go to Chuck E. Cheese then. Oh no, no. Talk about germs. Or Mr. Gaddy's. Got me there. You never been to Mr. Gaddy's? Uh-uh. I, I no. want to say that's like a San Antonio thing, or they used to be in Houston. And I don't. I, there, I saw one the other day. Actually, it was I was driving to Bernie, and I was like, "There's a Mr. Gaddy's," because it's similar to oh. Chuck E. Cheese's, where it was like a pizza place and you yeah. had games and all that stuff. But uh, that place. Have you been to Chuck E. Cheese? No, <laughs> not in a long time. Oh my goodness, I haven't been in a long time either, but. We'd take our kids when they were little, and I just felt like I was just covered in germs head to toe. And I'm not a germaphobe, but it sounds like you are. I, I'm really not. Which is ironic because you won't drink a green drink, <laughs> which is probably like good for you to fight germs. It probably is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got my own issues. <laughs> yeah, we all do. Uh, <laughs> but so, game changers, you interview people, all local people, all those people that you're interviewing? I'll interview anybody. So. Oh, that's uh, not good. You gotta have you gotta have some standards. Wait, anybody who has a story to tell who can inspire and help yeah. other people make a difference. So yeah. and pays the two hundred fifty dollar appearance no. fee. No, no. Yeah. But I do. So I have a couple requirements. If somebody says, "Hey, I really want to be on your podcast," I, great. Let's let's talk. Um, I want to learn a little bit more about them before we just you know start a conversation on the podcast. And I also want them to listen to it because if they don't know what to expect, then they don't know what they're getting into, you know? And sometimes people just want to be on a podcast. Yeah. I think, I think the direction, especially how available podcasts are, finding an audience is really difficult because how long can people really listen? And then also like what, what impact does it really have on people? You've got to make, you've got to make it, impactful within the first well you know this within the first few minutes or our, are, our show went off with a bang because this has been 42 minutes has it really yeah well you're this is the my morning show we're supposed to good take conversation a, yeah take breaks or whatever but we don't care no, you're listening to more you're you're listening to mornings at lone star on lone star community radio this we're has gonna, been great <laughs> it's been great to be here oh i love it i love the studio i love uh interviewing anyway so if you want to be a guest and i don't charge 250 dollars to be on my show. I don't either, by the way. Oh, I'm, I, I know you don't. I'm just leading people. I don't. I don't. And I don't require you to have a PhD. Okay? It's like some other podcast. Okay? And then, so you're good to go. You can be anyone. You'd be a street rat. I don't care. As long as you can, what? I don't know. Keep me entertained. Okay. Good enough. <laughs> Pretty easy. <laughs> Pretty easy. Yeah. Requirements are, you know, you know what you needed. You know what you need to do when you come in here. So Entertain a little okay, bit. Okay, I got... <clears throat> let, me, let me cough this out real quick. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on. Like, my sinuses, it's almost gotten to the point where like, I feel like it's permanent. Because I don't feel sick. Too much Copenhagen. No, I don't think... I, I, there's no way. Then it's again, sad. yeah, too many wheat shots. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's just like... it. I don't feel... I feel bad in the morning, but not hot, like not sick. And then I'm like, where's this coming from? Allergies? Yeah, I guess. And it's annoying. It's I've never had this happen before. It's really annoying. Oh, maybe but, it's uh, just a phase. But I want to talk about this. So Game Changers is a great idea, especially with the philosophy of, you know, def- or the definition of what a game changer is. Right. So I'm going to throw a reversal to you. Okay. Let's talk about I some, knew this was going to happen. Let's, let's talk about game changers that were horrible for the world. 
Oh my goodness. Let's do it. Who okay. do you, who can you think of who changed the game but for like the worst? Besides like Hitler, that's like an obvious oh, one. Oh yeah, well no, that was that's horrible, horrible. Um Well if, I mean when you said change the game for the worst, I mean we were talking about Jerry Seinfeld dating a seventeen year old. Yeah. It's kind of mm, creepy. But Not see, that he would have but, the game changer. See what's itself, what's weird but, about that is like it, it's creepy. That decision he made didn't really necessarily affect what he changed the game in. No, but it's like because uh, he was she changed like the game Woody for Allen. sitcom. Didn't Woody Allen date super young? He dated his daughter, or he no, married his daughter. That's that's just. But like his adopted daughter, so it was okay. No, uh, my goodness. But again, like that didn't change. He he changed the game in the movie world, so that had nothing to do with his weirdo lifestyle. Yeah, that's definitely. Weird. But like you know, you got like was this, uh, the Che guy from is it not Cuba? I'm going to blank. They make T-shirts of him. Che. Help me uh, out. No, I don't know. I'm looking it up. I live a boring life. I don't get out much. I don't know who Che is. Is Che in... Hugo Chavez. No. Oh. Like that guy. Hugo Ch- you got Che from Hugo Chavez? Well, there's a nickname. I forget what it is. I've, I've, I'm, I'm trying to find the Remember the guy's name. I'm gonna get. It's gonna come to me. Okay. They make a T-shirt of him, and he's wearing the beret, and he's like has a beard, and he's kind of a butthead. Killed okay. a lot of people, but no, that'd be bad. Yeah. But he's like he's the revolutionary. Uh, so if you're gonna, we're, we're thinking of people. Come on, we yeah, gotta get somebody. Well, if you're killing people, that's a bad thing. Well, how about uh, Oppenheimer? He changed the game, and he killed a bunch of people. Oppenheimer? Yeah, he made the atom bomb. That well. That's man, we're going like he's deep. a game changer. Well, for sure, yeah, absolutely. And, and he killed a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, and we're not. There's no bomb since like that. You know what's so weird to me about that scenario is like you know, it gives you an insight of the real threat the world was facing. Yeah, when you have the smartest people understanding what they're doing, they knew. Yeah, and then they went through with it anyway. That that, yeah, I mean. Can you I imagine don't, I don't, being in that room that's what when I'm, they were talking about it? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, we're going to kill imagine, millions of people right well, now. It's kind of like, like the Founding Fathers. Because the Founding Fathers got together, and they're like, hey, we need to do this. But they all knew they were going to die if they did this. It's like, yeah. if, we sign, if we make these rules, like it's, we got to make them worth it. Yes, stick forever. Yeah, and then yep. they all, most of those people who signed the Declaration of Independence... Yeah. Got nicked. They got well, clipped. It, you know, not not all of them. Most of them did. Thomas Jefferson? No, he. well, I mean, he had connections. <laughs> he slept around. That's what happens. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's why he did all that stuff. Like, he became friends with the Europeans and stuff, so he had to, like, a quick oh, out. Had, yeah, if, it went, if it went south, he's like, I got, I got France. I can go to France. And well, he spent a lot, a lot of time in France. I don't know. He's yeah. slept around a lot. Yeah, inappropriately. A good no. He's good. He made connections. <laughs> That's come on, guys. You guys it depends Game on game changer. Well, I guess I do have some standards, you know, yeah. with the with the guests. You know that that kind of game changer. Not gonna. Yeah, I would. I would be struggling for a good conversation. Well, Remember, I mean, it's about inspiring to make a difference. Well, it's, well, I always know, like in the business world, a lot of like a lot of times, the people who do the thing that change the game see the world differently, and they see either Jeff a, Bezos. Yeah, actually, I think Jeff Bezos, what he did was, he understood how the mar- how the money, the the way the money's working, because Completely. they still don't make profit. But he knows how to manipulate Wall oh Street. Oh, he That's my theory. He figured he figured it out where like it had nothing to do with books. It was Whoa. like, hey, I just need a product. I need a service. And whatever service that I land on, I can make it work because I know how to manipulate the market. But being able to go online and order I don't know, what whatever you're Well, he started with books. I know, but to my point is you can go online, order something, and get it 
delivered to your front door like within six hours. That is crazy. Yeah, and it's not profitable. So it's like, you know, stand, if, if that business existed 100 years ago, you wouldn't make it. Well, we'd never be able to get in in six hours. No, I don't think you could. Really? If you had a warehouse that's within six hours. Yeah. I think his issue is, or his thing, like, again, I think his thing, he understood how to borrow money, loan money, spend money. Well, he definitely and changed makes it the work. game. He changed the game for sure. Because it's like. A lot a, of people don't like him. And I don't know that I would either, but he's certainly made a difference. I guess. Oh, for sure. Now, nah, we, we can debate whether it's a good difference or not, but he's definitely made a difference because he's made, you know, other businesses oh, sort yeah. of rise to the, that level. No, I like it. You know? I, well, I like how that it kind of shows you how technology is co- constantly changing in ways oh, we never really yeah. expected. Yep. And then it's like yeah, a lot of it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, a lot of stuff. Oh, me too. I might but be with you. Did you, did you see that uh, thing that came out? Probably fake news. But about that guy who had a uh, smart house, no, no, and he had a smart home, and yeah. it was all th- all through Amazon, and apparently, really, a delivery guy was delivering a package, and yeah. the guy heard something from the ring doorbell, yeah, and he thought it was inappropriate, so he reported it, and they locked down his house, really, because they thought that the the delivery guy thought the ring said something racist or something like that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, I didn't hear that. And the guy like gets an email like his account's been locked so he can't access any of his <laughs> stuff. <laughs> well, I would, I would love to interview Jeff Bezos just so I could talk to him about his girlfriend. Okay. Cuz cuz it, it cuz to me billionaire is like it like the Elon Musk is like the typical yeah. billionaire where oh, you have like 30 kids? That makes sense. You have Does like he? not yeah, he has like nine kids or ten kids or something. Elon like. Musk has But see no one knows about it. No, I didn't know. I didn't and know. yeah, he has like nine kids I from didn't like know that five Jeff baby Bezos mamas. Had a girlfriend. I knew he got divorced. Yeah, he has some girlfriend that was like a weather girl. Oh. And I love how demeaning that sounds. Yeah, it's a weather girl. Yeah, that, uh, mm, yeah. Well, that, that meteorologists. always meteorologists. Yeah, see that see that always interests me in the sense of uh like you're this guy, you have or woman, you're you're filthy rich, and then it's like, all right, so why would I ever want to date anybody? Well, that's just human no. nature. You no, wanna... no, you have money. You're just like whatever. No, no, you. I don't want to ball. I don't want a ball and chain. I don't want that. Oh my goodness! I don't want that. There you go, pushing my buttons again. <laughs> but no, I would interview There's about so much that more to life because I well, I'm thinking to myself, it's like eventually, at one point, when you're that rich, you don't really care about the the dollars. You care about like the, you know, the gold bars. That's you what you really be care worried about. Worried about giving your money away. I mean, if you want to, it's your money. But I, what I'm thinking, what I'm getting to is, he when he realized, oh, I'm getting a divorce, yeah, from this lady, yeah, and it's like, do you think he even cared? He's like, all right, take half, whatever. I'm gonna go get this weather meteorologist lady. <laughs> <laughs> I. I don't know. I mean, I I would like to because that, that tells you something a lot about the guy. I, well, because I bet she hates the dude, the uh, the ex wife or whatever. Because I, I mean, would, when someone goes off I and does imagine. that, that's pretty. You're kind of yeah, like, bad. that's it's bad. Yeah, because no, no one talks about her new boyfriend. Because it's probably have, someone normal. One? I don't know. I don't even know. I just know that he was divorced. I don't know. Well, I'm just I, what I'm trying to get to is I love how rich people like the rich person. Yeah, always. Goes off and gets like the next best thing. Yeah, I know. And, I know where you're going with this, and I'm just I'm trying to. Really well, game changer. <laughs> He's a game changer. It maybe that's the wrong game. <laughs> I don't know, but I always laugh. I always laugh about that because it's always like the ex-wife gets some boring teacher or something, and but she's probably a hundred percent happier. Oh, than, I, yeah, I would think so. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I Jeff Bezos. I wonder what guys like to to live with. I mean. Who knows? I don't know. I mean, when you're that wealthy, who knows? He's he's unique for sure. Yeah, right? I guess. I don't I know. Be, Do you, I, well, I mean, it's just so weird to me. That whole world's so weird to me. I'll never re- be able to experience it or wrap my head around it. I mean, I'll probably. I never want to. Really, I'll probably one day. I'll, I'll probably will. Do you think Jeff Bezos has a butler? No, I'm a game changer. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Do I think Jeff Bezos? I bet Jeff Bezos has like an all-in-one Swiss Army knife guy. Like yeah. he's like the bodyguard. He's the chef. 
Yeah. You know, he probably does have sec- very high level security. You know, not just a bodyguard, but you know, several. So that's a lifestyle that would be interesting to follow around. It's like, yeah, yeah I get followed by six dudes everywhere I go. That that would be really uncomfortable. That'd be really cool because we could do like pickup <laughs> game basketball all the time. Like, okay, that's one way to look at it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the only bad thing is you do you guaranteed to pay gratuity every restaurant you go to. Like, you have to pay it. Of course. So. Or whatever that's called when you have more than six people. R- gratuity. Well, yeah. I know, but it's like required. You know, some yeah. restaurants have yeah, that. Where they like, just have the, uh, it's the, the 15% or whatever is just automatically added. Yeah. Yeah, because people don't tip. Some people don't. You don't have to. You should. You don't have to, though. Man. You should do a lot of things. R- right. But they don't, we don't. So. But <laughs> that's true, but we should. We should. Nah, whatever. We got to set the example. We got to do the right thing. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. Tipping's weird to me. Why? Because there's not, there's not a. Are you a big tipper? Yeah, but there's not a set standard. Right. So, and I think that's what bothers me a lot about it. But if somebody does a good job, don't you want to re- give them? Just yeah, the but reward? I don't think we have the whole scope of the tipping world. Meaning like... You're thinking way too deep, man. Well, no, because it's the expectation, right? It's like, all right, we went to a restaurant. The server serves me. We had a great service. But if I tip this guy, does that go to the chef? Does that go... Cause I he, ask. Well, but I'm not going to ask every single time. Why not? They, I'm saying they need to have a standard where it's like, hey, we're XY restaurant. This is how yeah. we do our service. And then what really bothers me is little things like when you go to Sonic and they yeah. want you to tip... Oh, and you're like, okay, well, I get like, cause I get the service, right? But it's like, yeah, cause I worked at Sonic, okay, and I always got pissed because <laughs> the the car hops would get tipped, and oh really, we, and we wouldn't get tipped, oh, and I'm like, I made that drink, I made that shake, and I prepped yeah. the so meal. So you didn't get any part of the tip? No, and I told the manager, I remember having this conversation. I was like, that seems really unfair, and he's like, well, you know, you know, that's that's how we keep car. I was like, well, I want to be a car hop then. And he's like, "Oh no, yeah. only 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 females can be car ops." Okay. And then I and I told my dad about that. And my dad, well, I went up there one time because that's how I got the job. He went to Sonic all the time, and he I remember him saying, "So he's like, hey, my son said uh, you only give women car hop jobs." And he's like, "Yeah, he's like, you know, you, you can't do that, right? Like legally, you can't do that, <laughs> right? You, yeah, true." And he's like, "Uh," and he's like, "Let my son car hop," and they. And so, did you car hop? I did, yeah. Wow. And then, uh, yeah. make more money? Unfortunately, no. Because <laughs> no one tips a dude. Oh, my goodness. But if the service is good, you gotta. They don't care. They don't come to the car hop. They have the rollerblades. I mean, come on. Really? Ponytails and rollerblades get you all the tips. That's Sonic. I, I have to confess, I, again, boring life over here. I don't think I've been to Sonic. Well, I mean, it, uh, it's, just, it's just a place. It's interesting. But, yeah. like, again, the tipping standard, it's weird. So, like, if you get food to go, do you tip this 15%? Because to me, the 15, 20% includes the service. But it they does. weren't really servicing me because well, they weren't the, refilling the drinks. They weren't saying how, asking me how my. The service was very different. Yeah, but does it still cost the same as 20%? Maybe not. And but, I even had this argument with a bartender friend of mine. Because when you go to the bar and you order a drink, usually it's a dollar tip. It's it not is? well. That's what like my go-to thing is. It's like I'll tip you a dollar if you give me a bottle of beer. Okay, one dollar. One dollar. So if the beer's four dollars, five dollars for the beer. Okay. Okay. And then it's like, but then if you make like a cocktail, tough customer. Get, you know how hard it is to open a bottle of beer. I'm just saying. You know man. how hard that is. But there's a lot of people that you know. Don't tip anything, so you know maybe two dollars once in a while for a bo- opening a bottle of beer. Yeah, no way, <laughs> no way. There's some people out there working hard, trying to make ends meet. Give them another buck. Well, if, what happens if I'm drinking like ten beers in an hour? You just made well, ten okay. bucks off. First me. of all, that's another conversation. <laughs> yeah. But second, so that's two dollars. You know? Well, no, but see, this is what I'm saying. That's what I'm getting to. It's like I order a beer, right. dollar, right? Yep. But if I order like six beers, 
Yeah. Is it six dollars or do I do it based no, it's off twelve? Well, that's what no, I'm talking about. I give him six dollars for six beers. Okay. For a tip. For a tip. But and I'm saying no. You're saying twelve. For but then more. I go. But is it based off the tab itself? When does it become based off the tab? Because like well, if, if I order like, say I order ten drinks, all yeah. fifteen dollars each. Right. Okay. So by my by my philosophy, I just give him ten dollars. Oh my goodness! But I understand there's and then a next line. Thing you know your drinks are going to be really yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's <laughs> yeah, but there's a line where it's like, oh, I spent 150 dollars on drinks. I probably should tip based off of 150. 150 dollars. Yes, thank you. Well, I know that's what I'm saying. Like, it, yes. there's not a standard. And it's kind of like we, how much, basically what it is, folks. You just give up whatever money you're willing to give up. That's what you should tip them. Like, how much? No, so, I got 100 dollars. No, Here's 100 dollars no. for a cheeseburger. No, you need to look at the entire bill and tip appropriately. I, if I tip less than 20%, then it's bad service. Yeah. I always like to tip. I'm a big tipper because they, they, they work hard. You know, I want to make sure that they're rewarded. You're looking at me like you're crazy. Yeah. Maybe I am. Yeah, whatever. And I'm sticking. To, I'm sticking to it. Big tipper. There's a guy I always tipped with two dollar bills. I always loved two dollar bills. Yeah, that's all he tipped. Can you in. even find those anymore? He he literally goes to the bank and gets some crisp. They have them. Yeah. Wow. I like that. I was like, that's kind of unique, a little bit. I don't think I've seen a two dollar bill in a long time. Well, it's because you don't get out much. It sounds like I don't. Yeah, my boring life. And he's going this yeah. hole to do this game 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 changer <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's fun. Well, look, so, well, tell me about this. Tell me the local game changers. Yeah. Like, what? Tell me about some people around here because that's where you you live in this area. Yeah. So, yeah. What, who's changing the game here? Who's? Oh gosh. Cause most, so many. I would say about fifty fifty chance chance if you meet a game changer here, they're probably stealing money. No way. I, that's no. what I think. Like, oh, no. I'm in the Woodlands Township, and nope. I'm nope. you know I'm changing the game. Like, yeah, he's probably stealing money. Oh, there's so many game changers around here. Uh, first one that comes to mind, Jeff Shalansky, Fob Razor, right here in Conroe. Fob Razor? Fob Forward Operating Base. Stands for Forward Operating Base. He's a, a veteran, um, and Fob Razor is an organization set up to help uh, veterans and first responders suffering from PTSD. Okay. He's making big changes. So he he's, has a he nonprofit? His wife, Carrie. Hmm? Has a nonprofit? It's a nonprofit, yeah. And what's it called? Fob Razor. And Razor is uh, his best friend's, or was his best friend's last name. Okay. Who committed suicide. Oh, that's terrible. It was, yeah, 22 a day. 22 veterans a day commit suicide. Something's going on. That's horrible. So he's making a big difference. See, I like this idea of the game changers. I don't think he's stealing money. He is definitely not yeah. stealing no money. But people in the Woodlands Township are definitely stealing money. Think so? Yeah, there's always something going on there. Yeah. I mean, I went to the Woodlands Pavilion, <laughs> and yeah. I went to see Dave Matthews. Everything yeah. was expensive, and I was like, "Isn't this a nonprofit?" And I get everything's expensive these days, but it's like everyone here is having at least one beer, and the beers are twenty dollars. And there's at Did least you get an extra large size. Well, they only have one size. Oh, they do. Okay, uh, a can wise. Okay, so you have to spend seventeen I'm have fifty to go sometime. No, it's crazy, and I'm like, they're they're making hundreds of thousand dollars tonight, and nonprofit. Yeah, right. Well, maybe it costs a lot of money to get Dave Matthews in there. I mean, he gets the tickets. He didn't get beer sales. No, he gets. You the don't think so? I think he gets the tickets, unless he's a really good negotiator. Well, then how do they they have to pay for all the expenses associated with putting the concert on? They're all volunteers. See, I'm pushing back here. There's got. There's. Oh no, I'm telling you, there's something <laughs> shady going on at the pavilion. I'm sitting there walking around, going, "How are they getting away with this?" Because everyone that works the concessions, everyone that works the front, the booths, and I think security is the only paid position there. Everyone else is volunteer. No, no I think they the servers. No, know. it's vol. I'm telling you, it's volunteer because 100 percent on that. 100 percent. Because I asked. You, okay. I asked. Right. So if you have one of the seats down front. Where the, you're you paid five hundred dollars or whatever, whatever for. it is, and the server comes to bring you volunteer, whatever, 
hundred percent. You're absolutely certain. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure those dudes are volunteers. Okay. All right. I'm not hundred percent there. I think they get paid something. Well, I, I think what it is, is the volunteer is an organization, and they give you they they donate money to that organization. Okay. So, for example, like when I went up to one of the booths, it said this is this booth is sponsored by the uh, Oak Ridge Booster Club. Mm-hmm. So it's probably the Booster Club volunteers their time, and then they get a percentage of whatever. Could be. Could be. Could be. I mean, I'm not saying it's there. I'm just saying something's <laughs> going on there, and it's really weird. There's a lot of yeah. cash. There's no cash there. They don't accept cash. So that, that's true. That even weirded me out even more. Really? Yeah. But I mean, you go to an Astros game, they don't take cash either. Yeah, it weirds me out. Why? Because there's something they know something I don't. Because <laughs> I have cash. I I literally when I went to Dave Matthews, I brought yeah. cash only. Because I when really? I bring cash, it limits how much you I spend. You still carry cash? Yeah. You gotta pay off people sometimes. You gotta tip. <laughs> <laughs> So there. So there. I got a tip. I, you don't tip with cash? You know what that means if you don't tip with cash? That means the owner takes it, and then they divvy no, it up. No. Yeah, it happens no. all the time. Depends on you got to ask. I do ask. So I'm just letting you ask. know. You got Yes, I agree. I'd rather that. tip cash because you don't have to claim it. That saves them a couple bucks. Okay. I, I, I think of the people. Okay. Unlike you. All right. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I carry cash when I like because that's the way. Because especially going to see Dave Matthews, I'm like, I can't spend a lot of money there because it's going to be expensive. Right. So I bring right. like this is my so budget. You, yeah, you got a budget, and then which is good. But like, it's good. They didn't. But they didn't take in, like nowhere. Right, right. No, they don't. They nowhere. Don't, yeah. Even the guys carrying the giant cans of beer, you would think they would take cash. No, no cash there. No cash. No cash. I was totally like, cashless. I go, this is crazy. Yeah. You, even you buy a. T-shirt or something, yeah, no cash, right? But it's yeah, it's the way it is. I think most places now. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna move to a town that doesn't have that. Good luck. I don't know where that would be. Small town, probably. Really? Yeah. Okay. Like a town that doesn't have internet. <laughs> There's. A, where is that? <laughs> I don't. Know. I mean, there are towers everywhere. Yeah, even my brother out in Holdezetta has internet now, which amazes me. Yeah. But uh. So they're, it's going everywhere now. Yeah, I remember one time I was interviewing a, a lady who was running for a position over in, oh, man, what county was it? It might have been Walker County or Waller Well, that's county. right next door. Well, I know, but it was but near more here. Rural. Or, or, yeah, okay. and yeah. I was like, so what's the biggest thing you're putting on your ticket? She's yeah. like, oh, I want to increase our broadband connection. And I was like, how can people not vote for that? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, and that's a great issue too, because it's not like a what do you call it, partisan issue. No, we all need it. It's like, yeah, we yeah, all need it. It's not a bathroom thing. That's good. We're not talking about bathrooms, right? Because <laughs> those are always are. fun discussions, right? Let's bathrooms. Talk, let's talk about the bathrooms real quick, guys. Okay. So when you think of uh, when you said bathrooms, the first thing I thought of was Bucky's. Yeah, cleanest bathrooms, most bathrooms. That place is amazing. It's kind of strange that that's like their foundation of success. I think it's just a byproduct. No, I think that's like their first thing they put on their ticket. Like when they're doing their, you know, uh, mission board or whatever you call it. The cleanest bathroom. Bathrooms it's like, what's ever? the first thing we want to do every day? Well, we want to make sure we have the cleanest bathrooms. Well, I mean, when you're on the road and you got to make a stop, it is nice to have a bathroom that's been attended to. Yeah, right. I guess. I mean, again, I guess I'm a germaphobe, but yeah, you are. Like, it, <laughs> <laughs> but when you walk into Bucky's, there is no place like it. You have to admit that. I've it's, not been to. I've been to stores like that. Like, you have not been to a Bucky, another store like Bucky's, with a hundred and some gas pumps. You oh, can get a gas cooler, pump thing. Yeah, you can get a watch. You can get a wedding band, and and I went to a gas station and had a washateri in it. Okay, but that's that. So that was cool. <laughs> so that means you're going to be there for a while. Yeah, I've always wondered why. I was like, this is kind of odd. How but... long does it take to pump your gas? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> well, it's more of a truck stop, but I was really impressed that there's a whole watch tier because I go in the restroom and it was so hot in there. And I was yeah. like, how I, I was like, wanted to say something to one of the clerks. I was like, it is like the heat's on. 
And then when I walk yeah, out and I July, look around, in Texas, that's a problem. And I l- walk around and I saw, oh, it's backed up to the washateria, the bathroom is. So probably all the wa- all the dryers are like on the other side of the wall, just well, look, heating it up. They gotta figure that out. Well, but yeah, Bucky's all right. I guess I don't know. Really, all right, come on. It's all right. Are you, really? Well, what what surprises me every time I go to Bucky's is they sell items that are so large. Because they'll sell grills and stuff, and I yeah, go right outside. And I was like, I wonder how many people come to pump gas. And oh, by the way, I'm and go, I need to buy grill. a grill. Yeah, and I'm going to get the latest Bucky's T-shirt. Yeah, it's really weird to me, mm-hmm. but whatever. And I'm going to get some candles and beef jerky and. Well, I mean, I've I, Bucky's has, Bucky's has helped me a lot. I bought flip flops from there. See, because I needed flip. Like we were going somewhere, and I was like. Ooh, it's hot. I'm not gonna wear sneakers everywhere we go. I'll yeah. wear flip flops. Yeah. So, I've actually bought the same pair twice. At Bucky's. At Bucky's. And you're giving probably me at the same Bucky's, Bucky's too, because of the same scenario I was in. Like I forgot flip flops. I'm like, every time we go up to Fort Worth, we stop at Madisonville with Bucky's. What do you get? Doesn't matter. Just stop at Bucky's. Do you tip them? <laughs> no, I don't. Because, Why is that? But they clean the bathrooms, dude. I, wow, you caught me on that one. But if there was a little tip option, you're gonna, you're gonna you, when you leave here, you're gonna be like the guy from Dumb and Dumber, where you're like, one for you, one for you, <laughs> one for you. That's that's how you're gonna be, and you're gonna see yeah. the whole world like everyone's gotta be tipped. Because there's a standard. There's gotta be a standard. I know, but and I, there's not. So it's chaos. So when there's chaos. You can you do whatever you standard. want. You set your own standard. Yeah, my own standard, my own standard is do whatever I want. So, And you can. Yeah, and I look at the guy, I'm like, I'm not giving you any money. And he's looking at you thinking, what? what? A dick. Yeah, right. Like, come on, man. You know, give me an extra dollar for that $4 beer. No, he just opened it up. I'm not, I'm not tipping more than a dollar. I'll die on that $1. hill. I'm, One dollar. I will die on that hill. All right. All right. Like he just goes, there you go. Someday I'm going to see you and I'm going to ask you. And I'm going to serve you a beer. And <laughs> you're going to be like, here's a dollar. I'm like, you know what? That's a lot of money for just opening up a bottle. Yeah. Thank well, you. I appreciate the dollar because that's more than enough. Actually, what I'll say is, do you have Venmo? <laughs> and then I'll be like, you're not getting tipped. PayPal? Yeah. Sorry, bud. I would actually, I want listeners to let me know. Dollar. To me, now you're making me think it's like it's not, that's more than enough. For opening a bottle of beer. It, it's more than just opening the bottle of beer, though. But it's more I mean, than enough for a tip. I, I broaden your horizon. Like, again, broaden your horizon. if you made, like, a whiskey sour or something yeah. and, like, crushed everything. And did then a it's little, probably little, six then I'll prob- bucks. Then I'll probably tip a little more. How much more? Okay, for example, go to 202. 202 Main, right down the street. Yeah. They have wonderful cocktails. They're one of those places that has like all their own bitters and yep. crap. Good stuff. And I'm not, I'm not one of those kind of drinkers. So when I do order that, I usually tip five bucks. So I'm already spending twenty dollars. There like, you go. The, there you go. But if I order a beer from them, I'm giving them a dollar. One dollar. So when the, so when you walk in and they're like, "Is he going to order a beer or is he going to order?" Something I always else? order a beer there. I rarely order a because you don't want to tip five dollars. No, because I don't want to. I don't like that feeling of drinking liquor in public. <laughs> I'd rather not drink. I'd rather drink beer in public. Okay. Why is that? Because liquor gets you quicker. <laughs> Everything in moderation. Yeah, but those drinks are strong. They just have and they're like so good. A little one. They're in. so good, and you're like, I want another one. I want oh, another boy. one. Okay, that's a different conversation. They're so good there. I've heard. Like the little treats. Yeah. It's a little treat. You can you can have that with your Copenhagen. That's oh, another yeah. treat for you. No, Copenhagen public's weird. You said you take it as a it's a treat. Yeah, but that's after dinner. Like I'm outside. Like what I'm if you go tre- out to eat? I wait till I get home. I'm like okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's almost it's like that stigma. You know, it's like oh god, it's spitting. Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> you dirt, you dirty smoker. <laughs> well, you, yeah, you. Yeah. I sound like I'm a smoker right now. No, you don't. I don't. I sound good. No. I feel congested. I've been smoking a lot of cigars. You smoke cigars? Yeah. And you? Yeah. I just, wow. hey, 
When I'm relaxing, I'm relaxing. Okay. All right. It's a roller coaster ride, buckled in. It's a short ride, but enjoy it while okay. it goes. All right. But then don't ask, you know, why am I feeling congested? Or, you know, there's probably some reasons for that. Oh, yeah. No. I mean, I think I think you gave me something out of that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I doubt it's the dip. It might right. be the cigars. All right. That's, yeah. Wish I would have known that an hour ago. Uh-huh. I would have given you a hard time about that, too. But I've been smoking cigars for so long. It's like, why well, all of a sudden, it's a combo. Maybe my body's like, you're, you're failing. And no, you, no. There's still time. Still time? You're young. You haven't hit it yet? I don't think so. Yeah? I hope not. We are drinking green drinks. That's right. Well, I'm, yeah, the little magic mind. Is that what's in there? No, it's coffee. Okay. Sure. This would be a lot of magic mind. Magic Mind is just a little two ounce potent. So does that mean it's bad for you if you drink too much? I would imagine that it would not be good for your stomach. But I've never tried. I'm not going to. I follow most directions. Because I, I, I want to say I heard somebody drinking something like that, but it had like Kratom in it. Yeah. And it like, he's suing them because it didn't tell him how much Kratom was in it. But it does say on the bottle, only drink half a bottle per day. Okay. But he was drinking like 10 bottles a day. So that would be a problem. It's some, it's, Read the label. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> I mean, because that's what I always wondered, I, you know, with doctors especially, where it's just like you you got at one point look at people like you're you're an idiot. Like, are you, like did you really stick that up there? You're an idiot. <laughs> Or did you really drink 10 of those where the, on the ball it says yeah. drink half of yeah. that? Yeah. Are you an idiot? Have you ever made an honest mistake though like that? Something similar? Where you? I did. A guy stole $100 from me. Well. Now, I was like very embarrassed for that because I was like, I just got bamboozled. And like I was. How do you think he did it? Oh, he. Did he if say, you oh, watch. Well, look at that over there. And then <laughs> no, I think what him. he did was if you watch the video, he's so good at pointing at stuff. Like, you know, he was like, I want to do this. I want to do that. My sister, I got five people coming in. And he's like, oh, yeah, but let me see this. Okay, yeah. And then, like, oh, what about this? What about this deal? And he's like, okay, let me see that and that. And I, I, we exchanged probably six or seven times because he kept changing what he wow. wanted. Wow. And the next thing I know, like, you could see him, like, on the video, you see him while he's talking to me. And when he when he pointed here, so I looked at it, he took the 100 and put it in his pocket but kept the other 100 right here to make it look like he – because he knew – Wow. And it was it was weird. It was it was like a magic trick, and I was That's very impressed. I was very impressed. I was like, "All right, now I know what to do next time." Is so? Did you call the police or do anything? No, no. there's nothing you can do about that. What do you want to? No, I don't. Yeah, because he well because sure he had he had the he had the mask on. Yeah, covering his entire face. Yeah, practically. Yeah, I mean, he knew what he was doing, but it felt like I was on the streets of New Orleans. Well, if he comes in again, you'll know. Yeah. Well, if he asks for a hundred dollars, I'm like, no, I don't do change for a hundred dollars. If guy comes in, he's got a scarf around his face. You'll know. I don't judge people like that based I'm off looks. I'm not saying that you, but you'll have an idea. Based off looks, I don't judge people. Like that. <laughs> okay. The rule of thumb but, is: rule of thumb is you don't make change unless they're buying a product. Uh, so I'd be like, oh, I can make that change if you're if you're buying something. Or don't take cash. What's your deal against cash, I have man? I'm nothing. I'm just saying. You know, it's a kind of cash is king. I would agree. Yeah. 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 I love I love the bowling alley because it takes cash. Really? Because I would love to own a bowling alley. That'd be awesome. Okay. We'll own a we'll go own a bowling alley. I am. I'm gonna have so much cash, and you're gonna have none. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, no, because I, I, I'm friends with the owner there, and we always talk about that because it's like, how do you, like, and he even told me a funny story about the IRS. Yeah. About how he does his cash. And he goes, I think the IRS is going to get rid of cash because they're restricting it so much what he can do with it. Yeah. And because he's talking about expenses because a lot of times, like, if they need tomatoes or something, they'll expense it out mm-hmm. and give, give cash to the runner, and they'll go to HEB and buy tomatoes or whatever. Yeah. And apparently you can't do that now. Even oh. if you have the receipt, even if you, like, yeah, you have to use a credit card or a check. Really? Yeah. 
Interesting. Which I I still think he misunderstood the IRS, but yeah, because I was like, that doesn't make any sense. You're already paying taxes on it. Like it's not like you're yeah, not reporting. Check is... and it's not like when you expense, you're not reporting it. You're reporting that it's an expense. So and you're taking cash and check and cash are very similar. Yeah, so I was like, that doesn't make any sense to me. But he goes, yeah, I think they're just trying to get rid of huh. people allowing to use cash for certain aspects of their business. Like it's for well, deposit only. Like you can't pay the repairman cash, stuff like that. Or expense it like that. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I, I'm not opposed to cash. Although, when you pay with cash, it's, you know, harder to track. Yeah, that's why I like it. <laughs> but it's for your own personal budget. and Yeah. You know, okay. You have your own budget, right? Yeah, that's what I'm okay. saying. Like, that's why I like having cash, because, like, I know exactly how much it is. That's my limit. And when you're out, you're out. Yeah. Maybe that's why you only tip a dollar. Yeah. Because if you tip more, you won't have money for the extra beer, beer that you want. Yeah, but I already know how many how many beers I'm drinking. Really? Yeah. How do you, when you go in, you just say, I'm going to, to yeah. yourself, I'm going to have just two beers. It depends on where we go. Mm-hmm. I know I know, where, I know how to make my money last. Like, if I'm going two or two, like, I'm only having two drinks here. I'm not. Okay. Because you know that. Yeah, because Keith. Keith is stealing from everyone here. He's charging so much money. <laughs> But okay. it's still a great place. <laughs> all right. I always give I give all the new businesses downtown. Conrad is like, yeah, you charge way too much. The new coffee, uh, been there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. Had its. I now, can't pronounce the name. Yeah. And I told Son that I was like, you know, I'm never gonna be able to pronounce this, and so I'm gonna call it Vietnamese coffee shop. Well, that's why I said the new coffee because I. Yeah, I don't know. It's like non com bom, non com bom bom. And every time I try to say it, I sound racist. So it's yeah. like, you know what? I'm not going to try it. Just call it the Vietnamese coffee place. Yeah. Just, and I've eaten there. I've eaten most of their food there now. Oh, really? It's really good. Yeah. Really expensive, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, it's great coffee over there. And, yeah, uh, it was very good. Very and good. Uh, that was the Americana. That was just the base. Oh. So. Okay. They do other fancier things. Yeah, it was good what we had. But I really just, I just like coffee. I like black coffee, so. And a good dip. Yeah. <laughs> at the same time? At, at just all the time. Ooh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just want to mess with you. Well, uh, you know, Jeff, I did, t- I did let the audience know that your information is uh, located below for the Game Changer podcast. And you're also a consultant. Yes, sir. So if you own a business, you just call Jeff and be like, Yo, dude, Absolutely. make me more money. I can come out and have a conversation. We'll figure out what's working, what's not working, and how I can help you. What do you think the biggest challenge going forward for new businesses is? Well, I, th- I think the economy, not knowing the uncertainty. You know, we've had so many changes in our economy with the inflation high, and now it's coming down. Is it all made up? I no, I don't think so. I don't know. Like, is not. there really like a set of dominoes being hit, and it's like it's kind of like it's going its course? Nope, nope. There are things that have happened that create the inflation, and like COVID probably really uh, COVID messed everything up. Yeah, and looking that, back, that was kind of stupid. What COVID or just how we or handled we, it? But we I, should just. I would agree. Cold the herd. That's what you need to do. <laughs> well, I, I think I think the fact that we were able to here in Montgomery County to actually go back to work in, within like a matter of month, yeah, made a huge difference compared to other parts of the country. And I think that did hurt business and it changed business for oh yeah, permanent or internationally. It's still Absolutely. affecting internet because I have a lot of yeah. friends who work in oil and stuff and like at the port. Yeah, and he's like, it's crazy because like. Certain countries have still have rules. Yeah. So if our have, boat yeah. is going there, it's like. Right. Right. I, I was in San Francisco a couple of weeks ago. People are still masked up. You know, a lot of people are wearing masks. And you know, probably bamboozling people. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. But he, today, if you see somebody with a mask on, what's your first thought? Are you. They're you know, sick. They're, yeah. There's something wrong or they're, you know, concerned about something or maybe they have a. A loved one who's sick and they don't want to bring something back, or but so I think COVID changed everything for us, and you know probably made it more cautious, which is good. 
but it also, I think, messed with our heads. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. But as a business owner. But is that something you recover from? Because when I think of the economy and think of business, it's like, I feel like a lot of stuff is reactionary for small business. Like usually, oh, usually small businesses good, yeah. are the, like, that's their first thing is they react to everything. Yeah. They don't preempt. And like, but then I feel like bigger businesses take advantage of these scenarios. And it's just, oh, yeah. it's no brainer. a lot of businesses that made, made lots of money during yeah. COVID. You know, took advantage of the fact that there was a need, you know, protection, personal protection items, you know, the, there were companies out there that changed what they were manufacturing and made what we needed, made a lot of money doing it. And then there were smaller businesses that just couldn't do it. Couldn't well, they weren't allowed to. Yeah. Right. I would say stuff it. How someone many, told me. <laughs> how many restaurants closed during COVID? Yeah, restaurants, they're all right. They're a dime a dozen. Yep. Yeah. That's what I like about food trucks, because you can get away from the cops. Food truck? Yeah, if you had a food truck, yeah. you'd be like, hey, we're open here for the day, but we're going to be somewhere else. No one knows. It's, yeah, unless there's a food truck park, which, have you, are there food truck parks near you? or? Yeah, there's one right down the street, yeah. Table at Medley. Yeah, there's so many, good, some of the best that's, food. That's social distancing right there. Some of the best food comes from a food truck. Good well, stuff. I mean, some of the best food comes from people, but not a cook. <laughs> so if you go to a restaurant and it sucks, it's probably because the cook sucks. <laughs> right, right. Good point. Good point. So, I mean, yeah. there's a reason why there's bad food and good food. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, as a business, I think, you know, just the uncertainty. And we, how you talk about cash, we treat cash very differently now. You know, having enough cash on hand is so important. Oh, because yeah. Because if the government says, okay, you can't open your doors, you can't go I'm to work. I'm telling them to stuff it. You have to have enough cash on hand if no revenue is coming See, in. See, what happens is the, the paranoia in my mind happens. And if you get rid of cash, what's going to end up happening is we have another COVID. And the government's going to be like, hey, you can't be open. Oh, we saw some transactions. You're open. We're going to close you. We're going to take your bank account. But if it's cash, they'll never know. They'll never know. True. Unless they send somebody. and They're never going to do that. They might, but that person might not live. They try to close my business. <laughs> wow, I didn't know you were my life. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, you know, if it's your business, it's your business, you know. Got, got to protect it. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And that's probably why they wouldn't arm all those IRS agents. They ran into so much trouble trying to. I was to, just going to say they just hired 80 or yeah. hired 87. They probably 000. ran into so many people like, you're not closing me. You know, I wonder how did they come up with that number? Why eighty seven? I, I bet they probably had some. What would just run? Well, off, they probably hire a hundred thousand. Well, then they probably had a study and it basically said like, "This is how much work we have ahead of us, and we're, this is how long it's going to take us to do it." So for us to incre- uh, decrease that number or the length, we're going to need eighty to a hundred thousand. Well, what's the lowest number or that doesn't cost as much? Eighty thousand. We can try to do it. Eight yeah, eight thousand. Realistically, they probably should have gone with a hundred thousand. But they're, you know, the government always asks, Just "What's the cheapest? Thousand. What's the cheapest one? What's the cheapest way that people Zero. don't people don't yell <laughs> at us? People don't yell at us for. We're still gonna spend money." Yeah, that I don't know. That just made no sense to me whatsoever. What's even crazier about this, and I, and I could be completely wrong, is with technology improving every aspect of life, you would think the technology in the IRS would improve so well. So much that the automation part of it for the general public is right. taken care of. You don't need 80000 because I work a job that has a W-2, and all I have to do is go on the IRS.com, type it in. You already know everything already. Right. And I just go, send. Right. And, like, I, would, I feel like that's such a high percentage of people in this well, country. Can you even mail in your tax returns? I have no idea. I just do it online. Electronically. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, I'm sure— they would accept it through the but you also have like mail, a, but, but like you don't need an agent a human being looking at every single one because everyone that's like they know how many people are just doing w twos right and then there's going to be a certain amount of people who do assets and do all that kind of stuff but it's like it's almost streamlined in well, a way it, unless you're doing something like something new because like I remember like when I first got married that was new 
Yeah. And I was like, we're going to mess this up because it's new. <laughs> and that's what happens when you're trying to like do something right. And like, okay. But we never messed it up. But you know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. there's some honest mistakes people make when they're right. filling out their taxes. Yeah, but then there's also some, up the learning curve. Yes. Yeah. And like my favorite one is the people who claim their driving miles still. Like, it's yeah. almost like a pain in the butt. And you're like, do I really want to do this? Because I have to defend this if they refute it. And yeah. Yeah. You don't log your miles? Yeah, but I'm saying, like, that's one of those things. Like, is it worth it? Because if they do refute it, you got to you gotta go through this whole it. thing. Right. And you're it. like, uh, okay. But I feel like, though, like what I was trying to say is it streamlines so much, hopefully, that you don't really need that many people. I Well, I think most of us would agree. And that's that begs the question, why 80-some thousand? It's probably all those people getting tipped. <laughs> yeah, they're going after those people. They're not claiming yeah, it. Yeah, they're not claiming it. But they're getting tips in cash. Yeah. Uh, what a world. But, uh, Jeff, <laughs> thank you so much for coming in. Oh, it's been great. Thanks we got we got me. other shows coming up here on, on Lone Star. If you want to be a guest on Morning's Lone Star, feel free to reach out. This one was a very special episode, so it went pretty it long. Yeah, and uh, I really want to encourage people to check out Game Changers Podcast and then Understandable Solutions for Business Consulting. We'll uh, be back next week. We got some people coming in. I think I got the Montgomery County Hospital District coming in. We're going to talk about ambulances and how they rip you off. And then uh, I'm just going to lay down. They, <laughs> sa- they save lives. They save lives. They're yeah. great. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, uh, we'll be we'll be seeing you guys next week. We have the safest food supply in the world.